Continuing the series of weekly contest 278, let's shoot for the second question. Minimum operations to make the array alternating. Here in this question, we are given an array of integers consisting of n positive values. We need to make this array alternating in nature such that every alternate element happens to be equal and every adjacent element happens to be unequal in nature. What, what can we do? How can we update this nums array? In each operation, you can choose any index and change it to any positive value of your choice. What do we need to do? We need to return the minimum such operations needed to make the array alternating in nature. So here they have specified couple of examples. I'll be talking about the same examples by the presentation. Also the approach to go about it. So let's quickly hop on to it. Minimum operations to make the array alternating lead code 2170. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. So let's get started. I have taken a slightly longer example so that you get a good hold of the concept. The elements are 31424 And what we need to do in this question, we want to make sure that every alternate element happens to be equal in nature. That simply signifies all the blue elements should be turned to the same value as well as all the brown elements should be turned to the same value. Also, we want to make sure that the value to which they are turning similar to both of them should not be equal. So let's go step by step. In the first step, since we want to make sure that all the blue elements should be made equal, we need to pick the one that occurs most of the time along the blue indexes. And how can we do that? It's pretty simple and straightforward. We create the frequency map for all the elements that exist at the blue indexes. So what are those? We can see three occurring ones. So let's write three and its frequency one. We can see four occurring twice. So let's write four and the frequency is two. Let's see five, five occurs once and then we have six. Six also occurs once. Now someone will say that which element to pick up we should pick up the one that occurs at most frequencies, which is four. The highest frequency happens to be two. As a result of which we can say that we will tend to make all the blue indexes equal to four. So this gets updated with four, this gets updated with four, this gets updated with four. And how many operations did you consume? You consumed the total number of elements that are present one, plus 2, 3, 3 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 minus 2, 3 conversions and that gives you 3. Pretty good so far. Let's do the same kind of a thing for the brown indexes as well. So what is the frequency of all the elements that occur at brown indexes? We have one occurring at two positions, this and this, two occurring at a singular position this one, seven occurring at a singular position. So what element does occur most times? It's one as a result of which we'll make all the elements at brown indexes equal to one. So it will correspond to one conversion over here and another conversion over here. The total number of conversions that we did happens to be two and uh, we can add these two up three plus two, which is five and gives us the result. In the final state, all the blue indexes have been updated to 4 and all the brown in indexes have been updated to 1. Pretty simple and straightforward, no rocket science. However, there is a trick involved that you have missed right now. The question also said that the adjoining element should be unequal. We haven't taken it into consideration. So let's try and understand this by a slightly different example. The elements are as follows. 3, 3, 4, 2, 3, 3, 5, 3, 6. And let's get started. In the first go, what you're going to do, you'll create the frequency map for the blue array. And let's check how many times does 3 occur here. 3 occurs twice. So let's write the frequency of 3 as 2. Next, we have 4 occurring once. Next, we have 5 occurring once. Next, we have 6 occurring once. So let's just highlight these up. And let's do a similar kind of a thing for the brown array as well. So we have three occurring thrice and we have 
टू अकरिंग ओनली वंस प्रिटी सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड नो रॉकेट साइंस येट अगेन नाउ लेट्स लुक आउट फॉर द एलिमेंट हुज फ्रीक्वेंसी इज मैक्सिमम इन द ब्लू आर ए विच वन इज दैट दिस वन दैट इज थ्री थ्री अकर्स एट टू पोजिशंस एट द रिजल्ट ऑफ इच यू मे गेट इंक्लाइंड टू वर्ड्स मेकिंग ऑल द ब्लू एलिमेंट्स एज थ्री सो वन पॉसिबिलिटी इज डेफिनेटली दिस दैट यू मेक ऑल ब्लू एलिमेंट्स एज थ्री लेट्स लुक एट द ब्राउन आर एज वेल वट डू यू सी यू सी दैट द मैक्सिमम फ्रीक्वेंसी एलिमेंट अगेन टर्न्स आउट टू बी थ्री दैट ऑल्सो टेंस टू मेक ऑल द ब्राउन एलिमेंट्स एज थ्री इफ यू मेक ऑल द ब्लू एलिमेंट्स एज थ्री एंड ऑल द ऑल द ब्राउन एलिमेंट्स एट एज थ्री इट विल बी द वॉयेशन टू द कॉन्स्ट्रेन गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन दैट एवरी एडजॉइनिंग एलिमेंट शुड बी डिफरेंट इन नेचर लेट सॉल्व इट ऑन केस बाय केस बेसिस लेट शूट फॉर द फर्स्ट वन वेयर यू आर मेकिंग ऑल द ब्लू एलिमेंट्स एज थ्री so when you do that what would be the cost of it you have to make all the re- elements remaining elements as 3 with that simply means you have to update 4 to 3 5 to 3 and 6 to 3 so it will involve three units of cost because each of the frequency is 111 now in the brown array what do you need to do instead of making all the elements 3 you have to look out for the second highest frequency element which is 2 as a result of it what you are doing you are making all the elements equal to the element that occurs at the second highest frequency which is 1 and that element happens to be 2 so you are making all the brown elements to be 2 in nature what is the cost involved for this the cost involved is 3 units so 3 plus 3 gives you 6 one possibility of the solution is it will cost you 6 units of operations and here what you have done you have made all the blue elements as 3 and all the brown elements as 2 one solution is this one let's look out for the other possibility of solution here instead what we will do we will make the entire brown array as 3 and we will look out for a different value for the blue ones so when we are making in the entire brown array as 3 how much cost will it take it will ca- take only one unit of cost because you have to just update this particular element so all the brown elements gets updated to 3 and the cost associated with it is one unit you can get it from here the frequency of the remaining elements in totality now what we should do we should update the blue array to a different value other than 3 so which element that it could be it will be the second most highest frequency that occurs in the blue array so you can pick either 4 5 or 6 because the frequencies of all these elements happens to be one in the blue array so let's assume you are picking 4 that simply means you have to update all the remaining elements to 4 how much cost will be involved in that 2 plus 1 plus 1 which is 4 units so you are making the entire blue array as 4 and that cost you 4 units of operations in totality how many operations you would have performed 4 plus 1 which gives you 5 it is better than 6 as a result of which you will definitely go for this permutation rather than this one to conclude we need to look out for the second highest frequency whenever there is a clashing case between blue and brown arrays If you have any doubt don't worry everything will be crystal clear in the coding section and we'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here so let's quickly move on to the coding part here what do i do i create two arrays odd frequency and even frequency and in the question it was specified that the maximum number of elements could exist after 10 raised to power 5 therefore i have taken the size as 1 4 times 0 followed by 1 because the elements can vary from 1 up till this one i have created two arrays frequency odd and frequency even this is this will store the frequency for all the odd indexes this will store the frequency for all the even indexes along with this i have created four variables odd max odd max frequency odd second max element odd second max frequency i iterate through the input array and build my 
frequency odd appropriately pretty simple and straightforward i start from the first index and with each iteration i am incrementing the pointer of i by 2 units then i go ahead and search out for the maximum frequency that exists in my entire odd frequency array along with this i also store that element at which it occurs then i go ahead and look out for the second highest frequency that exists in my entire array along with this i also store that element at which it occurs again i create four variables even maximum element even maximum frequency even second maximum element even second maximum frequency i iterate through the input array nums and appropriately build this array i create i look out for the one that has the maximum frequency and store that element in even max similarly i again look out for the second highest frequency that exists in my even frequency array and appropriately store the index at which it occurs now to conclude is just a simple formula if my odd max is not equal to even max that means both of them are un different i simply use this formula n minus odd max frequency minus even max frequency and this will give me the result otherwise i have two options to choose from one is i pick up the odd maximum element and even second max frequency because one of because odd max happens to be equal to even max this is the first possibility the other possibility is n minus odd second max frequency minus even second even max frequency i have chosen i have chosen the maximum even element and second odd max element over here so i choose the one that returns me the minimum value let's try this up accepted this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye